Hello everyone, it's Margaret Berry once again. It has been a minute since I had a new video on this YouTube channel. Granted, I have been a little bit busy as of the time of this recording. I am 38 weeks pregnant, so it could be two days or three weeks until I have a baby. But in the meantime, I thought, why not film a new walking workout? Because of course, I love these walking workouts. I've used them before, during, after pregnancy in between. Um, they're appropriate for all ages and stages and they really just have so many benefits. And I figure this time of year, with it being winter, at least here in the United States, um, it is colder, it's a little bit harder to get outside. Maybe people are looking for shorter workouts that are very effective, that have benefits for improving lymphatic flow and blood flow, decreasing inflammation, helping with puffiness, and also supporting healthy blood sugar levels. So that's what I thought that I would make for you all. Now, again, this workout is got some new moves in it. It's got some moves that I've been enjoying in my own walking workouts that I do, and hopefully you will enjoy this workout as well. I think it's one of the ones that I've done that I like the most in terms of the moves and the upper and lower body focus. We'll start off with a few form tips, especially for those who are new. We will do the walking workout. And then of course, we'll have some cool down stretches because I love being able to do that after you're all warmed up, your fascia's all primed, you can stretch it out. So let's go ahead and get into the workout. So to begin, we're just gonna talk about some quick form tips while we step in place. So again, remember with these workouts, we're really thinking about good body posture. We're thinking about shoulders in line with the hips. We're not excessively arching out and we're not excessively curled under. We're kind of in between that space of good alignment. You're also thinking about when you're stepping, you're thinking toe heel, toe heel, toe heel. Full follow through with the foot. And for extra lymphatic pumping, you really wanna make sure that you squeeze your calf. So right here, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze as you lift. Squeeze and lift, and then you go toe heel with the foot. That is gonna help move that lymphatic fluid, decrease puffiness, swelling, water retention, and help improve your circulation as well. So you're really thinking that toe, heel, toe, heel. You're thinking a straight line with those feet. So again, not, not ducking them out, not pigeon toeing them in. Thinking as straight as you can with those feet. Really important to maintain that good alignment. Now, as far as the core, you're thinking about, again, tall posture. You wanna think about your belly button, that instead of pointing towards the ground, you're kind of pointing it straight forward and a little bit up. And again, this should not cause you to go like this, and it should not cause you to excessively arch your back out. You're in between that space so that you can maintain good alignment, good core activation, thinking about those tummy muscles helping you lift the leg. Because so many of us just kind of lift the leg. We don't think about the core, we let the core go. Think about focusing on that core activation, really keeping it tall, centered as best as you can. Okay, now let's get into the beginnings of the workout. So just follow along, I'll cue for each move. We're gonna do some different moves that are gonna be cardio focused. We're gonna do some that are more strength building. So just follow along. Let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're gonna do, step in place. We're gonna take our arms. We're gonna do some arm swings. So I want you to take your arms, I want you to go. Swing the arms, bring it back up to a mitten hand. So it's jazz hand, mitten hand, jazz hand, mitten hand. Keeping that tall posture, not arching your back out. Tall posture, keeping everything activated. You should feel this in your back, but also all along the front of that arm. Lots of lymph can move there as you swing it back. Jazz to a mitten, jazz to a mitten. Couple more, jazz to a mitten, jazz to a mitten. Now we're going to do some swings. So we're gonna go swing, swing, pull the elbow up to a mitten hand. Swing, swing, fingers together, thumbs are stretching for that mitten hand. Swing, fingers together, thumbs stretching. That's your mitten hand, jazz hand as you swing. So it's jazz hand, swing, mitten hand as you come back up. Jazz hand and swing, mitten hand as you come back up. That's what you're gonna do. So that really helps move length again from the armpit, upper body, really great for your hands and your wrists as well. Decreasing inflammation there. Okay, 
Next, we're gonna go some side to sides. We're gonna throw these in here and there to kind of help lower the heart rate down as we go along. So here we go, we're gonna side step, side, side. Hands come forward and to the middle. Midline with that hand, stretching the thumb each time. Now making sure that you're not doing this, and you're not doing this. Really thinking linear alignment from knee to the ankle as best as you can. There's no perfect here. We're all just working on our best alignment that we can do. Side, side, side. We'll give you side view. So it's side, 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 side. Keeping everything stacked as you go side to side. Really feeling that. You'll kind of feel that in the outside of the hip, especially on this move. Side to the side and come back to center and keep stepping. Okay, next we're gonna build in some more cardio moves. So we did the swings, let's do a little bit more activation of the upper body. So keep stepping, arms are gonna come up, we're gonna do no jump, jumping jacks with the bare claw hand. Pull the knuckles back, stretch the thumb, ready, here we go. So it's pull two, three, up to a V, reach all the way down, reach down and reach it up. Pull two, three, V, two, three, reach it all the way down, reach it down as you go back up. Pull two, three, up two, three, down, and all the way back up. Pull two, three, up to a V, down, and all the way back. Now let's do it a little bit quicker for four. So it's pull up, down, and up. Pull up, down, and up. Again, pull up, down, and up. Last time, pull up, down, and up. Let those hands come down. Shake it out. And we're gonna do some taps with the feet. Ready? It's one, two, three, tap. One, two, three, squeeze that cap. When you tap, tap. And tap. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, tap. Now let's try it with the heel. Here we go. So it's one, two, three, stomp the heel. One, two, three, like you're squishing a bug. One, two, three, and one, two, three, tap. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now we're gonna do the toes and the heels. We're gonna mix it up a little bit. So ready? One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, heel. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, heel. Now reverse it. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, heel. One, two, three, tap. One, two, three, heel. And just step. Do an inhale and exhale. It's surprising how some of these moves can bring up your heart rate when you don't feel like you're doing much as well. Okay, now let's do some chest press and we're also gonna do some posture power arms. So again, the whole time while you're doing this, you're maintaining that good alignment. You're squeezing the calf when you lift that leg and you're thinking toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel with the lower body. Keeping that activation while the upper body is working. It's a lot to think about, just do the best you can. All right, let's get those arms out. We're going to do chest press first. This time we're going to use a mitten hand. So mitten hand is fingers together, pulling back the fingernails and stretching the thumb. Don't let those fingers go away from each other. Keep them together, stretch the thumb, Hands come up tall. Let's do our chest press. Keep it level. Two and out for two. In for two, out. Keep it level as best you can. No leaning back. Out for two, in and open. That is three, four and open. Now let's do a little bit quicker. So it's in and out, two and out, three and out, four and out. Now bring those arms out. Posture power arms, it's in and open, two and open. Jazz hands, as much space between those fingers as you can. In and open, in and out, in and out. One more on this side. Now, take a breath, exhale. We're gonna look over the opposite shoulder, so just follow along. So it's in, open, look, and in, open, move that palm back, in, open, palm goes back, look over your shoulder, and palm goes back. So good, fascia in that neck and arm, in, open, look to the side, last time, in, open, 
Flip to the side, bring those hands down, shake it out. Let's do some swings here. So it's swing and in. This time, go to a fist. So it's swing, jazz hand, fist. Jazz hand, fist. In and out, down and out. In and out. Now let's go at the shoulder. This time we're gonna put our hands out. We're gonna punch towards the shoulder. Punch and pull, punch and pull, punch and pull, punch. Keep those elbows tight, punch and pull. Don't wing it out. Don't wing it out like this. We're thinking straight in alignment. Push and pull, push and pull. Now up to the shoulder, a little bit higher and pull. Up and pull, up and pull. Stepping all the time. Up and pull, up and pull, down and now hold it there. Inhale, exhale. Now slow down your stepping just a little bit. We're gonna do some low swings now. So it's low swing and up, low swing and up. So it's jazz hand to that mitten hand, fingers together, stretch the thumb. Jazz hand, mitten, jazz hand, mitten. Good job, jazz hand, mitten. Whew, just let those arms rest, relax for a minute. We're gonna go side to side. Lower that heart rate down a little bit. So go kind of slow this time. Again, knee over ankle as best as you can. Straight from foot, the front of your foot to your heel, keep it in a straight line. Over, tall in the middle. Think tall chest, but don't lean back. Over and over, good. And last time, and then come back to the middle and just keep stepping. So now we're going to do a little side to side. This is kind of new, uh, but we're gonna do a little side to side motion. And then we're gonna do some stuff for the glutes, especially this area of the glutes, kind of the glute medius, that upper glute area. Okay, so for these, you're gonna start off, you're gonna go down, lift the leg, down and up. So just side to side and up. Keep your mitten hands as you go down and up, down and up. It's just like a little miniature squat. Four and five. Feel it in those glutes. Six, we're going for 10 and seven. Keeping straight foot. Eight, look down and check. Make sure they're straight. Nine <laughs> and 10. Good, now come back to the middle. Do a little more stepping. All right, next we're gonna do another move for the lower body called the back leg push. You're gonna to turn to the side if you need to follow along, but basically you're gonna do it like this. You're gonna step forward, lift the back leg, step forward, step, lift back leg, step, lift back leg, squeezing that glute when you lift that leg. It's very important. That's the part that you're getting that activation on. Squeeze that leg, step, lift, step. We're doing a flat foot first, then we're gonna point it in just a second. Okay, so a step, flat foot, step, flat foot. Your hands can stay here or you can have them down, whichever you prefer for balance purposes. I'm <laughs> keeping mine right here. Okay, step, lift. And now another side view here. Notice I'm not leaning forward to lift the leg. It's all coming from the lower body up into that glute. So it's step, lift, squeeze the leg. Step, lift, squeeze that leg. Step and squeeze. Step and squeeze. Now to the pointed toe. Pointed toe. Ooh, now you're gonna feel more. Pointed toe up into that cap. Pointed toe as best you can. Now if you're prone to cramps, you may want to just stick with the flat foot because that can be intense. Step and step and point step. One more time each side. Last time, step. And now just go back to stepping. Whoo, you should really feel that kind of in that hip area, especially the upper part of that glutes. Really great for working that area. Let's do some side to side. So it's side, side, stepping and stepping, keeping it tall as you can. Again, with your torso, tall, good posture, like a string's pulling from the back of your head up to the ceiling, keeping it as tall as you can. Over, make sure your toe to heel is straight, step, 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 and step, and then come back to the front and just keep stepping. All right, inhale, exhale. All right, next we're going to do puppet pull arms with a leg lift. This is great for the whole body, but also works left, right brain, coordination, and all the other benefits we get from lymphatic movement. So put your hands up 
above your head. You're going to pinch the fingers at the thumb. So it kind of makes a little donut shape. This is called donut hand. You're going to pull down. So you're going to pull down, lift the knee, and come back up. Then you're going to go all the way down. So it's pull, lift, and then all the way down when you lift the other side. So it's pull and down on the next count. So pull up and down, arms up, arms and down, arms. Now when you're lifting that leg, try to keep it with that alignment. So it's pull up. See, I forgot to go all the way down on that one because this is hard. It's hard for our brains to process all these different moving parts at a time. Just do the best you can, down and up. So it's pull arms and down and tall torso. Pull up and down all the way and bring your arms in, shake it out. Actually bring it up to the shoulders. This is a great way to, again, help with that drainage. Hands up, tall torso. Shake out the hands while you keep those shoulders in alignment. Shaking it out. Very good. Okay, last move. We're going to do some arms from Thread the Needle as we go side to side. So this is a little bit more of that left brain, right brain. Really important to work that, especially while you're working your body, you're also working your brain. So for this one, it's a little tricky, but you're gonna have your arm coming in. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go in and to the side, in to the side. It's kind of rhythmic, but it's really complicated to keep that tall torso. When you're doing this, make it definitive. Don't just kind of flop your arms. Think like you're a puppet. You're really keeping it tall, really keeping it tall, stretching those fingers as they're together, you're stretching the thumb. Kind of looks like a crab more <laughs> than, uh, than thread the needle, but the lower body working too. But you're thinking about keeping tall, in, out, in, out, and over, over. Let's do it a little bit quicker this time. Ready, here we go. So it's over and over, over and over, over and over, do your best you can with alignment. One more, and then bring it in. Woo! Surprisingly challenging for those arms, right? Wouldn't think it, but it really is. All right, take an inhale. Exhale. Let it all out. Just slow down that stepping a little bit. Still thinking about that good form. Toe heel. Core is activated and tall. Tall torso. Just slow it down. Really think now, when you're slowing it down, squeeze that calf. You can usually feel it more once you slow down. Squeezing calf here, squeezing, squeezing calf there, and then you think toe heel, toe heel, and the end. That's gonna move the most length for you in these workouts, and even when you're just walking during the day. It's gonna really help with that. Now let's do some taps. So it's one, two, three and tap the toe one two three and tap one two three tap really feeling that pull down there through that calf those poor calves are tired <laughs> they're tired now and tap and now let's do a heel ready heel that leg drive the heel into the ground step keeping torso tall step one more each side and last time, very good, do a couple more steps. This time let's do a hunch. This is great for reducing your heart rate at the end of a workout. So take your hands out to the side, do a big hunch. Almost like you're getting your shoulders up to your ears. And then release, two, three, four. One more time, curl it up, hunch. Shoulders like they're coming up to the ears and then just drop it, release and there you go. All right, that's the stepping part. Love to incorporate some stretches. So let's go ahead and do that now. So step to the side, kind of out into a wide V shape. Next thing you're gonna do is lean into one leg, kind of like you're doing reach scoop. So you're gonna lean over into this leg. You're thinking knees tracking out towards the little toe. Again, it's not here, it's not way over here. You're thinking it's tracking out towards the little toe and you're thinking straight line from knee to heel as best you can. Now you're gonna take your hands, doesn't matter which one, but you're gonna interlock them in front. And you're going to bring one shoulder down and bring one elbow up. So the side of the leg that's bent is the side that the shoulder's gonna go down. 
The other arm is going up to the ceiling, okay? Want you to imagine that someone's pulling that arm up to the ceiling, all right? Now you're gonna lean over a little bit, drop your head, and you're going to stretch to the side. Now again, depends on how flexible you are as to how far you're gonna go over. <laughs> With where I am in pregnancy right now, it's hard to go up very much further because of my belly. But you may be able to, again, go down a little further. You may be able to move around a little bit. Get some release there. Tucking your chin now. Inhale. And exhale. Now, if you're a little unstable here, you can always grab a chair or railing and use that to help you enhance the stretch. But you're really just thinking about opening up this side body and stretching that back muscle that runs really from the back of your neck to your hips. Now slowly come over to the other side, but pause in the middle, do an inhale, and exhale. Now you're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Again, arm up, grasp the hands, elbow goes up, lean into that leg, take as much space as you need with the other, elbow up, and you're almost kind of, again, chin tucks, Turning down, huge stretch, especially through there in the back. Kind of around that armpit. Adjust your stance as you need to. Again, you can hold on to something. If that works best for you, do an inhale and exhale. Now bring your hands around to the front. Do a big, wide squat there. Kind of looking down at the ground, inhale and exhale. Slowly roll up, so take your hands to your knees. If you're over in this position, gently tuck your tail under. Slowly roll up. Tall with the torso at the top. We're gonna do a torso stretch before we do a little hamstring stretch. Thumbs at the hip bone. Press down into the hip bone. Tall with the torso as you go up. So thinking stretch, remember to hip inhale. And exhale and just release it back down. You should feel like you gain a little bit, a little bit of inches there in your ribbed hip from that stretcher. Pushing down to stretch out. Pushing down to get that length in the front of the body. Okay, hamstring stretch real quick, and then we'll be done. So you're gonna take your leg out. I'm gonna hold on to the wall here. You can use wall railing, but you're basically going to pull up the toe. You're gonna step the other leg back, and you're just gonna gently look down at the ground, pulling up that toe, Turning out a little bit if you can, so turning out the knee, just a smidge. You can put your hand on your hip. I like to do that for support. Inhale, exhale. As you do this, you're gonna feel that you can release more into that hamstring. Inhale, and exhale. Really stretching the back of the leg, feels so good. Hold that for a little bit longer, take a couple more breaths. Slowly come up, slowly come up, switch to the other side. And comes to the wall or the railing if you need it. Weight is centered on that other leg that's straight. This one is going to have the toes pulled up, heel digging in, and go down. Ooh, feels so good. I'm tighter on this side. Oftentimes people have one side that's more tight. That could just be from imbalances or the way that everybody likes to move and prefers to move. Can also be from one side being weaker even. Sometimes a strong muscle isn't always a strong muscle. Sometimes it has to be tight because it's weak. So just regardless, lean into that. You can add some movement here. Kind of turning a little bit. Feels so good. Inhale, exhale, just hold it for a couple more seconds. And then slowly bring it back up. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this workout and I hope you have a fabulous